So this is chapter 4, verse 3. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإن خفتم على تقسطوا في اليتامى فانكهوا ما طاب لكم من النساء مثنى وثلاثة ورباع and if you fear that you cannot be just between orphans then marry women of your choice two or three or four this is the evidence that you permitted to marry up to four wives. Listen to what it says in the Arabic. Methna wa thulatha wa There is an Imam who read this ayat from the Quran and it says, Marry whom you like, women of your choice. Among the women, methna wah and what does wah mean? And wah thulatha wah ruba. Marry women of your choice. Two and three and four. And what did he do? He added them up and got nine. And he said that. The Quranic verse here allows you to marry up to nine wives, and he in fact did that. Is he correct? How many wives did the prophet have? Uh huh. Is it possible that this brother is correct when he read the Arabic? It didn't say "ao," which means "or." It says. Well, is it possible that this Muslim who calls himself Imam was correct from this verse of the Quran? Marry women of your choice, two and three and four, added them up to be nine. And he said, according to this verse, a man can have at least nine wives. Is he correct? Is he correct? Yes. How many say yes? In the Arabic, I swear by Allah, in Arabic, where means and. That's what it says in the Quran. Take my word for the Quran says where and where means and. Huh? Ah, very good. That comes to the first lesson that we want to learn today. How to understand any verse from the Quran. Two things I want to learn us to learn today. One Context. Context. You have to read the verses before and the verses after. It's called context. What is the context? What surrounds the verse that you're reading? Two, you have to understand the Arabic language. You have to understand the Arabic language. And so the sister says, can wa mean something else? Certainly it can. It can also mean or, and here it means or. And the third thing, the most important thing, if you want to understand the interpretation of any verse from the Quran, you must go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In order to understand any verse from the Quran, you must go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for Allah revealed the Quran to Muhammad. And not only did Allah reveal the verse to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the words of the verse, but he also revealed its meaning. So the best one to understand the Quran is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no one who understood the Quran, its meaning, better than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you want to know how to interpret the Quran, you must go to the one that Allah revealed it to. Who is it? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, Allah not only revealed the words of the Quran to Muhammad, Allah revealed the understanding of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
You understand it? Understand it well. If you want to understand what the Quranic verse is saying, you must read the verses before and you must read the verses after. It's context. Two, you should understand the Arabic language. And number three, if you want to understand what it means, go to the one who's authorized to interpret it, and that one is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, there's something that we can know about this verse. First of all, brothers and sisters, this Imam who said that you can marry up to nine wives, how do we defeat him? We defeat him by Sunnah. We defeat him by Sunnah. We defeat him by studying the history of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by studying his Hadith. For when this verse of the Quran was revealed, Muslim men had many wives. There was a companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who had ten wives. And he continued to have those ten wives until this verse was revealed. And when this reverse verse was revealed, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered him to divorce six of his wives and only keep four. Now the Sahaba had five wives. But when this verse was revealed, the Prophet said, divorce how many? One, and keep four. When this verse was revealed, those who had six wives had to divorce two and keep four. So the interpretation of this verse, the practical interpretation of this verse, is by going to Sunnah. So we reject this Imam who say, you can marry nine wives. But we have a problem, don't we? The problem is, according to what you say, sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had nine wives at one time. That's what you said, right? But now, isn't it a contradiction from verse, chapter 4, verse 3? You told me you can only have four at a time. Huh? You said that, right? Is, did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam go against Quran? If the Quran, according to what you say, only limit four wives at a time, tell me then why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had nine, according to what you told me. Did he go against the Quran? Says Khadija. Ah, uh, maybe he had nine not at the same time. We're saying that he had nine at the same time. Huh? No problem. We agree. He didn't have nine. How many did he have? Eight? No, you sure about that? I want this class to be able to debate this issue with anybody and to know for surety because they're going to ask you, they're going to put you on TV, on radio, the newspapers, cameras, the cameras, the newspaper people are going to come and say, your Muhammad doesn't even follow the Quran because according to the Quran in the fourth chapter and third verse it says that you can only marry four. Yet your messenger had nine wives at one time. Please explain the contradiction. Maybe certain situations. What words do I want you to learn today? Dalil. What does Dalil mean? It means proof. It means evidence. We as Muslims must bring the Dalil. We must bring the proof and we must be the evidence. We don't want to say, well, maybe, or, be, uh, or possibly, uh, uh, no. We want what? The Dalil. This class today is going to learn Dalil. Are we saying that the Messenger of Allah, Uldu Bilal, contradicted the Quran? We're not? What are we saying? Can anybody please explain this glaring, seemingly glaring contradiction? Yes, ma'am, to the yes, ma'am, to the on the wall first. Sister? Yes. Ah ha. Wasn't there an exception made for him? Very interesting. But what is your Dalil. It's nice to say, 
made? Was it an exception made? Who made the exception? Did Brother Siraj make the exception? Allah? You, are you sure about that? Can you give me some dalil? Excuse me? Very good. Let's turn to chapter 33. Ahzab. See, you class, this class, you got the idea now. You got to go to the Quran. Chapter 33, verse 5. I'm sorry, that's if I'm in 50. out of the prisoners of war whom Allah has assigned to thee and daughters of thy paternal of thy paternal aunts and aunts uh, uh, paternal uncles and aunts and daughters of thy maternal uncles and aunts who migrated from Mecca with thee and any believing woman who dedicates her soul to the prophet if the prophet wishes to wed her this only for thee only for thee and not for the believers at large. We know what we have appointed for them as to their wives and the captives whom their right hand possesses. What did we appoint for them? We appointed chapter 4, verse 3. So which verse came first? Chapter 4, verse 3. Then the prophet said, then Allah said to the, about the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's made all your wives halal for you. Only for thee and not for the believers. He goes on. In order that there should be no difficulty for thee and Allah is all forgiven, most merciful. Continue, 51. Thou mayest defer the term of any of them that thou pleaseth, and thou mayest receive any thou pleasest, and there is no blame on thee. If thou invite one of those terms thou hast set aside, this were neither to, this was nigher to the cooling of thy the eyes, and the prevention of their grief and their satisfaction that of all of them, with that which thou hast to give them. And Allah knows all that is in your hearts, and Allah is all-knowing, uh, all, all most forbearing. Now what I want you to read really was not that verse, but the verse that follows it. Now listen to this. It is not lawful for thee, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to marry women after this, nor change them for other wives even though their beauty attract thee, except any thy right hand should possess as handmaidens, and Allah doth watch over all things. What happened there? Prophet Muhammad, even him, at that point, could take no more wives. Allah made it cut off from him, except for what his right hand possesses, prisoners of war. Even the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at that time, could not marry more than the wives he had. History proves that after that verse, the prophet did not take on another wife except for one who was a prisoner of war, which is the exception that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him in the Quran. Now, today we're talking about what? We're talking about the dalil, evidence. We be able to go in the Quran and someone say to us, well, how many uh, uh, um, women how many women are men allowed to marry? One time, we said four. How do you know? Because chapter 4, verse 3 says it right there in the Quran. Well, how do you know what that means? We know what it means by checking the Sunnah and the history of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that when this verse was revealed, he limited the number of those Muslim men who had more than four wives. He had them to divorce them and only to keep the four. That's the proof and that's the evidence. But what about Prophet Muhammad? 
He had many wives. Well, he, there was an exception for him. Who made the exception? Allah made the ex exception. All you have to do is look into the 50th chapter and um, the, the 33rd chapter and the 50th verse, and you will see the exception. Now, you said he had nine wives. How do you know it? Let's go through them. How many think they know all the wives of Prophet Muhammad? Raise your hand. Well, let's see how smart we are. Let's see how many we do know. Okay, I need somebody to go to the board and write for us. Muhammad Mendes, please. Muhammad, maybe you can put it on the on the sheet there. Now I want the obvious one first. Everybody say it. Khadija. Khadija. We have to say Khadija because Khadija was first. Who can tell me the second one? Sauda. Good. Sauda. S A U D A H. Sauda. Who can tell me the third one? Aisha. Very good, yes, Aisha. Who can tell me the fourth wife? Hint, daughter of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Hafsa. Hafsa. Who can tell me the sixth wife? Um Salama. Um Salama. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fifth. Make that. That's six, actually. The fifth one. Thank you, Umar, dear. This, uh, the fifth one is Zainab. 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 Z-A-I-N-A-B. Zainab Bint, the daughter of N-A-B. Zainab Bint, B-I-N-T, Bint, the daughter of Khuzayma. K-H-U-Z-A-Y-M-A-H. Zainab bint Khuzayma. Six is Um Salama. Seven is Juwariya. J U W A Y R I Y A H. Who can tell me the eighth wife? Hint. We already mentioned her name. Zainab, he had two wives named Zainab. This one is Zainab bint Jash. Zainab bint Jash, J-A-H-S-H. J-A-H-S-H. The ninth one, who can tell me? Hint, the daughter of Abu, hmm? No. Abu Sufyan. Daughter of Abu Sufyan, a very famous Sahaba who fought against Islam before the rise of Islam. Very famous, Quraysh. Anybody know her? Um Habib, Habiba. It's Habiba. Um Habiba. Um Habiba. Uh oh, who could tell me the tenth wife? Huh? Safiya. Safiya. S A F I Y Y A H. S as in Sam, A, F as in Frank, I, Y, Y, A, H. Who can tell me the 11th wife? Ah. Maimuna, M, A, I, M, U, N, A, H. Maimuna. M -A -I. I'm not sure. I can we look it up. Anybody know what that word means? M A I Y uh, M A I M U N A H. Is that nine? Is that it? No. No. He had more. Huh? He had another one. You think so? We don't want to think in this class. We want what? Dalil. Want the evidence? Want the proof? That's it? Yeah. Huh? Ah, Miriam, yes. Miriam was the last one. He had a daughter. Yeah, I'm sorry. He had a son by Miriam. What was his name? Ibrahim, yes. Ibrahim, very good. But he died in infancy. Okay. 
Brothers and sisters, today we're talking about polygamy. Is polygamy halal? Is it halal? Is it uh, permissible? Huh? Come on now, talk to me. Is, is polygamy halal? Is it lawful? Yes. Under all circumstances? No. No? What are the conditions? Is it, is it a time that polygamy is haram? Is there a time that is not permissible to marry more than one wife? Yes, ma'am. Are you What if a man says, just as says, you can only marry a wife that you can afford? What if a man has very limited resources and his wife is a millionaire and she says to him, you know something? I'm a millionaire and you don't have to pay me all this money and I still want to be married to you. Is it permissible? Is there ever a time when it is haram for a man to marry more than one wife? Is there ever a time? Anybody? You start to raise your hand. No. It's bad. Yes. Is it ever a time when a Muslim man, it is prohibited for him to marry a Muslim woman more than one at a time? Is it any time? Yes. And one time only. And listen to what I'm going to say. Khadija. There's a time that a man cannot marry another woman. And that is if he fears, if he has fear that he can't be just, then it's haram for him to marry another woman. Not, I didn't say if he can't be fair, uh, if he fears, he has a fear, you know, if I marry that woman, I can't be just to her. He can't marry her. What is your dalil? What is your evidence? Go back to the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 3. Chapter 4, verse 3. Allah says in Quran, Marry women, men and nisa, marry women whom you choose, your choice. Methna, wathulatha, warubah. By the way, brothers and sisters, this word, methna, wathulatha, warubah, doesn't mean two, three, or four. Doesn't mean that. It means two at a time, or three at a time, or four at a time. That's what it means. Methna doesn't mean two. Methna means two at a time. Thuletha. Thulath doesn't mean three. Thuletha is three. But Thulath means three at a time. See, this verse is permitting you to marry three at a time, four at a time. And the word, uh, the word, um, rubah doesn't mean four, it means four at a time. So Allah says, marry women of your choice. Three at a time, four, three, or two at a time, three at a time, or four at a time. For in khiftum ala ta'dilu wahidah. And if you fear that you cannot be just, then only marry one. If you fear that you cannot be just, only marry one. If you fear that you cannot be just, only marry one. If you fear that you cannot be just, only marry one. Now, brothers and sisters, I come to another point that we're going to make today. Justice is a requirement, one of the major requirements of polygamy. Justice. 
Now, brothers and sisters, I call your attention to a very interesting verse from the Quran. Everyone turn to the Quran, chapter 4, verse 129. And you're going to see something very interesting. Excuse me? You know what? Okay, sisters, we're already ready. Listen, brothers and sisters, listen to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen. Remember the verse I just said a little while ago? If you fear that you can't be just, marry how many? One. Listen to the words of Allah. Lan. Lan. L-A-N. Lan. Lan. You know what that word means? Never. Never. Lan. You will never test that you be able and ta'ulu, you will never be just, never be able to be just, never, len tastatiu, never be able to be just. And ta'adilu, you will never be able to be just. Benanisa between women. Never lan tastat you. You will never be able what and ta'adilu to be just. Benanisa between women. Listen. Walao even harstum. It is your greatest desire. Oh, oh, we got a problem. You know what problem we have? Allah said that if you fear you can't be just between women, only marry one. And he says later on, you will never be able to be just between women, even if it is your heart and desire. We got a problem. Let me tell you why we got a problem. Because we have what is called apologists. Huh? Apologists. modernist who love the West so much that they will try to find any dalil, evidence, proof from Quran and Sunnah to attack the Islam. Now let me tell you what some of these apologists and modernists have said. They said yes, it's true. Allah gave the permission for men to marry up to four wives. But later on, he revealed another verse that shows you in reality, you can never be just between women. So in reality, polygamy is haram. Illegal. Do we agree with him? Do we agree? That makes, makes sense, doesn't it? Then tastatiu, then tastatiu, and ta'adilu, you'll never be able to be just vain and nisa between women. Wallahu even is harastun, even if it is your greatest desire. You can't be just between women. He said, based on that verse from the Quran, polygamy is now unlawful. He's got a point, doesn't he? Strong. And you know what? Many Muslim, I put this in quotation marks, scholars have said, you can't marry more than one brother. You know why? Because lan tastatiu, lan tastatiu, and ta'adilu, benanisa. You can't be just between women. And Allah said in Quran, if you fear that you can't be just, only marry one. So is, are these scholars correct? Yes, ma'am. Well, here's this fool thinking he can be just. He's a fool. Because Allah told him you can't be just. So this scholar is saying, hey, man, you, even though you don't think you ought to fear it, if you don't, because you, you don't fear it because you're foolish. You're ignorant. So Allah revealed in Quran 
that you can't be just, even if it's your desire. Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't think that it's just about saying that it's a Why? Wait, let me stop you. Let me stop you right there. Before you finish, I know you're not finished, right? Are we permitted in Islam to drink wine? You have doubts about it? No. I know you said no, but I want to make sure you said with conviction. Are we permitted to drink wine? Are we permitted to drink wine? Wait a, wait a minute now. You say some places said you can. Give me an example. One example is Allah says, do not approach Salat while you are intoxicated. Do not approach Salat while you are intoxicated until you understand what you're saying. That's one of the verses you're talking about, right? But what's the problem? The problem is, later on, Allah revealed the verse of prohibition. Stay away from it. It's haram in order to be successful. So, sister, the point that you're making is that sometimes Allah reveals in Quran that appears to give uh, uh, says, appears to give permissibility, but then later on, he takes it away. Why? Because the Quran was revealed in 23 years. So maybe, I'm coming to you, maybe is it possible that Allah first permitted polygamy and later on permitted prohibiting? Is it possible that this verse in the Quran is giving a hint to the man that in the future time there will be no more polygamy? Why? Len tastadiu. Brothers don't like what I'm talking about. Len tastadiu and ta'adilu. You will never be able to be just between women. Even if it is your ardent desire. What Allah said earlier. In kiftum ala ta'dilu fawahida. If you feel that you can't be just, only marry one. Yes, ma'am. Continue. Now you can continue. What it would make me think of is that a brother should be very careful about his wife. Because if he Good. Good point. But sister, remember this though. The point we're saying here is that I mentioned earlier that there's only one case that you can't marry another wife, and that's when and you're fair that you can't be just. Being just between your wives is one of the requirements of polygamy. It's one of the requirements. But Allah then reveals that you can't be just. Isn't that de facto saying? You may have the appearance that you can marry more than one wife, but in reality you can't because you'll never be able to be just. You have to clarify. This, ha, 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 yes, he said, you must clarify just. What does it mean? You see, brothers and sisters, those, and see, I gave you a hint by calling them apologists. An apologist is a person who tries to explain Islam in a way that's suitable in Western standards. That's an apologist. So they say yes. At one time, Muslim men were not allowed to marry more than four wives, uh, more, um, more than one wife, four wives. But now it's different because of this verse on the Quran. He makes a lot of mistakes. Let me show you what the first mistake is. I told you in the beginning of the class that you can't just read an ayah by itself without reading the context. If you read not even the next verse, but the next word, it's a proof that a man can still marry up to four wives. Because what does it say? It is. A lot of it stopped there. He said, period. He said, you are never able to be fair and just as between women, even if it's your art of desire. But... Turn not away from one of them huh, altogether so as to leave her, as it were, hanging. And now if we get to the brother's point, we have to get some tafsir or explanation of this verse in order for it to make sense. 
So this verse shows you, if a man can only marry one, Allah wouldn't follow that verse by saying, but, but, don't leave one hanging, mu'allaka. You see, brothers and sisters, this is beautiful. The Arabic alone, the Arabic uh, words in this verse alone shows you that polygamy is permissible. It shows you, it's proof of it. Why? Even though it is your desire to be just between women, you can't do it, but nevertheless, Still, don't leave one of your wives hanging. You have a, maybe you have a preference for one. Does it mean now that you should leave your other wife dangling, suspended? No. Be just. Even though you can't be just, at the same time, don't leave one hanging. Now, yes ma'am. It's a possibility. Now, to get the real explanation, we have to go to Hadith. We have to go to Hadith. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you again that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best interpreter of the Quran. He's the best interpreter of the Quran. And Allah revealed in Quran that we reveal to him, Muhammad, the message, the Quran, in order that he may explain to the people where they differed. Now, a couple of points. If this verse was saying that men from this verse on can only be married to four, I mean, I'm sorry, only married to one. That would mean that all of the people at that moment who had more than one would have to have divorced them. Like the other verse we said that mentioned four, when that verse was revealed, all those who had more than four had to divorce the excess. But in this verse here, when that verse was revealed, none of the Sahaba divorced their wives. None of them. So they didn't understand this verse to make a prohibition against polygamy, as some modern scholars would have you believe. That's the first point. You would have to ask this person, you say, you know, if the Sahaba, who understood the Prophet better than us, if they didn't understand this to be a, prohibit, a prohibition against polygamy, why do you? And the key, brothers and sisters, is this word just. You'll never be able to be just as between wives. How did Prophet Muhammad explain that? Ishmael, I know, um, why don't you tell us, inshallah? Sheikh Ishmael Abdul Karim. In that verse, how did the Prophet, how did the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, define just in that verse, you'll never be able to be just. How did he, how did he define it? Exactly. What Sheikh Ishmael was saying, in the first verse, chapter 4, verse 3, if you fear that you won't be able to be just between wives. It's talking about financially, things like that. You have to be just, brother. You can't give one food and don't give food for the other. You can't have one sister decked out with clothing and other sisters naked. No, you must be just. And if you fear that you can't be just like that, then only marry one. But in the other verse, it's not talking about financial. It's talking about emotional. It's talking about love. You can't be exactly the same. You can't say that if you sleep with one wife tonight, you must sleep with the other wife. You can't do that. Why? Because that love and affection is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the Prophet said, Oh Allah, I am held 
accountable for those, that thing which is in my power, financially. But I have no control over that which is in your power, and that is my heart. He said that Allah holds the heart in between the fingers, and he turns it this way, and he turns it that way. Now think, brothers and sisters, here's a man who has two wives. One of them is like Aisha radiallahu anha, or one of them is like Zainab. One is given, one is loving, one is beautiful, one is this and that, and maybe the other one, maybe, is stingy, argumentative, boisterous, lazy, maybe. And do you expect the man to feel the same exact way to both wives? It's not in his power to do. It's not in the power to do. So this verse makes us to understand that Allah will not legislate what's in a man's heart. You can't legislate what's in a man's heart. If a man has an inclination toward one more than the other, but you can tell him, brother, you must be just. Spend time with this house, spend time with that house. Take this one on a trip, take that one on a trip. Be just, that's what's in your power. But in terms of the affection, the pouring out of the heart, you can't be controlled of that. And this is the definition in that verse the Prophet made us understand because he's the best explainer of the verse. Is polygamy permissible? Of course it is. But there's one time that it's not permissible. When you fear that you can't be just. And if you fear that you can't be just, then you can't. Then only marry one. That brother and sister brings us to another point. These modernists I like to read a quotation from a book written, uh, it's called Halal al Haram, the permissible and the, um, and the non permissible in Islam. Written by a man named Yusuf al Qaradawi. Listen to the words. I quote Islam permits the Muslim to marry more than one woman, he continues, in order, in order to resolve some very pressing human problems, individual as well as social. What's wrong with that? Is anything wrong with it? Nothing? I'll read it again. Islam permits the Muslim to marry more than one woman in order to resolve some very pressing human problems, individual as well as social. Anything wrong with that statement? It appears harmless on the surface. But Ishmael? What's hidden, Ishmael? Polygamy, see, social and private, and not necessarily. Polygamy doesn't just, that's not just a means for, for, the, for the resolution of, of private and social problems. So, if you're saying polygamy is just that, then that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, Let me say how I would have said it. I would have said his own words. Islam permits the Muslim to marry more than one woman. Period. Not in order to, because he implies that if you don't have these social problems, you can't do it. Because the reason that it permits it is in order to. So they say, oh, the wife is not able to have children, so you can take on another wife. And so you can have children without divorce in the first wife. These are the things that you read in the classical books, the apologists and the modernists. Brothers and sisters, if your first wife can have children, if your first wife, you're getting along very well, you have money, 
Everything is fine. Everything is nice. You don't need another wife. Can you take on a second wife? Certainly you can. And this is the point that we're making here. Certainly you can. Now, run sisters, um, what I like to do. Anybody have any points they want to make so far? I want to continue. I want to try to get yes, ma'am. Ha, 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 Very good question. So if you don't take it on for a social ill or something else, why else, what other reason do you take it? I say to you, sister, that's a very good question. Hmm, that's a very good question. Can, is it possible that a man can look and see a woman and become attracted to that woman? Is it possible that a man might even dream about a woman and feel that he wants to marry such woman? It happened to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who did he dream about? He dreamt about Aisha radiallahu anha. Who was he attracted to? He was attracted to, according to history, Hafsa. He wanted to marry her. Even some other companions, they thought about it, but they heard that the Prophet had mentioned such and such person, so they didn't bother to pursue it. So my point, sister, is this, that if a brother just decides, for instance, because Allah gave him the means, and he wants to see another Muslim family in his family, then he decides to take another wife. The only point that I'm making, sister, the only point that I'm making is that let's not do what the apologists do and the martyrs do and make some condition that Allah's messenger didn't make condition. For instance, another modernist, he says that it is not permissible for man to take the second wife except for the permission of the first wife. Yay! How many believe that craziness? Why is that an obvious flaw? Huh? That's right. And if brothers, a brother can't take on another wife without the permission of his first wife, you think any of us would ever take a second wife? No. <laughs> any of you brothers dumb enough to think that um, some women? Sure. Sure, I said, yeah, I, I agree with you. Some women do. One out of ten million. Could be two out of ten, I'm sorry. Two out of ten million, you're right. The point is, the point is, we would not have any large scale polygamy in no country, believe me. And the brother said, honey, I was thinking about taking another wife. Uh, please, can you give me permission? She said, no. Go away. Come on, sisters, be honest now. Come on now, tell the truth. You talk about idealistic stuff. Yes, honey. You have the right to do it. Go ahead, please, and make copy with you. Not hardly. Now, I'd like to explore a myth with you for a few moments. A myth. By the way, one of the apologists, a man named Qasim, His name was Qasim He lived in the late uh, 1800s Just give me a second, because I want to I read uh, his, his words to you. Oh, yeah. Qasim Amin, 1865-1908. Now listen to this. Sisters, tell me if this is true or not. Brothers, you can just guess. You don't know. I'm asking the sisters. If you think you want to answer, brothers, you can do it. Right? Qasim said, No woman 
First of all, he put down polygamy. He said one of the problems with Islam is polygamy. You need to get rid of polygamy. This was his position. His position, like other apologists and modernists, is that, that uh, polygamy has no place in this modern world, that this is one of the causes of the backwardness of, of Islam, is polygamy. Listen to this. No woman can relish the idea of a permanent rival sharing the bed of a husband. No woman can relish the idea of a permanent rival sharing, sharing the bed of a husband. He went on to say, Islam is bad and should be abolished. Um, polygamy is bad and should be abolished because the woman no woman wants to share, no woman wants to share a husband with another, with another woman. No woman would accept that. It's true. But there's a little problem. Part of it is true. All of us agree. But, but there's a problem. You know what the problem is? Let me tell you what the problem is. There's a fundamental problem. And you know what it is. If this statement was true, no woman would ever get into polygamy. A man can't get into polygamy by himself. So a woman volunteer, volunteers to become the second wife, the third wife, or the fourth wife. I say to you, brothers and sisters, to in my opinion, polygamy is more for the woman than it is for the man. Hear what I'm telling you now. Think about it. Our experience is this. Women who is who's the first wife, her husband takes on another wife, she becomes dismayed, distraught, she seeks a divorce, she gets out of the marriage. Our experience is many times that same wife goes and marry a man already married. Tell me I'm wrong. Why? Because polygamy is as good for the woman as it is for the man. It is as much for the woman as it is for the man. In fact, in my opinion, it is more for the woman than it is for the man. Yes, ma'am. Already has a wife because this way she never has to go through that experience of disillusionment or being hurt or feeling that this is my husband or go through that whole dilemma ever again. So, therefore, it makes it easier for her to enter into that type of Isn't it better, sister? I appreciate your statement. Isn't it a fact that when a woman chooses a man, she, in her own estimation, is choosing the best man for herself? Whether that man is married or whether that man is single, she has more choices than a woman who can only choose for men who are single. And the difference is, because that woman can still only choose for men that are single, but she chooses to marry a man already married. Why? Because in her estimation, that married man is better for her than any single brother that she sees. Now, sister, what you're saying might be true. Well, I don't want to be. I don't want to be hurt again and marry another brother. Brother's gonna take on another uh, another wife. I might as well marry a brother already have another wife. That don't make sense. Then tell me why that makes sense. Because if you accept the idea, then you accept the idea. Go into a marriage and marry the man to marry the man, the best man for you. And inshallah, if Allah chooses, you will be married to him alone, or he take on another wife. And whatever happens, if you fear Allah and the brother is just, then there will be peace and harmony. Yes, ma'am. I think they might, it might have something to do with um, just the emotions of it. Like when you're the first wife, all the time, but when you take one, when a man takes on another wife, that first wife feels like she wasn't good enough. She feels Certainly. like she doesn't make, you Certainly. know, the mark, so to say. The Certainly. second wife always can feel wonderful because she's like, well, you was there and it didn't make a difference. He still wanted me. So the second one becomes they still feeling wanted, etc., etc. Where the first one has a, um, a lower self-esteem, or so what, and so forth. And then, you know, her, it so reverses that she leaves that man because she can't deal with it. 
then and she gets into a political situation, then she still knows, you know, that that man really wants her. And then what happens if the husband takes a third wife? Does the second wife then changes? No, it doesn't. At that point, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, Zafrachai. Yes, ma'am. Um, Good. This is the point now. Now, see, this is the point. This is the point. This is the point. Sisters, on purpose, last week before we left, and I asked the brothers, I told the brothers, I said, brother, if a man takes a second wife, does that mean necessarily that his first wife was inadequate? Of course not. See, and you, you have to understand that, sisters. You, you have to understand that. It doesn't mean that you are inadequate, you, 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 you are something that you're lacking, and I don't like this, and therefore I'm going to go there. Now, sisters, it may not sound real to so you. May, you may think that we're making this up to make you feel good. That's not, that's not a fact. I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, sisters, and I can prove it to you after this sister make a point, inshallah. Yes, ma'am. Sister? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I agree with you. Now, and one of the things we're going to do toward the end of the class is have a little workshop. How to do it. Because it depends on how it was done. And brother, most of us mess up because how we did it. Most of us mess up. Why? How we did it. And we messed up. And I say all the time, brothers and sisters, Islam hasn't failed. The system of polygamy is good, but the brothers and the women mess it up and gives polygamy a bad name. But in reality, whatever Allah makes halal is good and good for you. Yes, ma'am. These two points, sister, I'm going to move on, inshallah. Okay. Oh, you must have came late. No, I heard you. Did you hear the, the, the verses we explained? Yeah. That we talked about the difference between being just financially and being just with the emotions of the heart. You can't be totally equal. And that verse means equal. He can't be totally equal in terms of affairs of the heart. He can't love them the same degree. That can't happen. That'll never happen. But he is commanded by Allah to be just in the things that he can control. And the things that he can control is how he spends the money. Yes. Yes, of course. This is an excellent point. Now, see, brothers and sisters, the word equal here doesn't mean the same exact thing. For instance, brother has two wives. One wife has no shoes and the other wife have a hundred pairs of shoes. Does it mean that the brother who buys one pair, one shoe for the wife who have no shoes, he must now then buy a pair of shoes for the sister who have a hundred shoes? No. So now we have to go into using common sense how to do it, how to be just. Maybe one woman, she has much riches and she doesn't need or require that. So then we have to go into other things and can't be exactly tit for tat. You know, you gave her a toothpick, give me a toothpick. <laughs> uh, but, we'll, but, but we'll try. I'm going to come back to that in a moment, sister, because there's another point that I'm going to have to make. I'm going to let the sister make a point. I want to continue first and we have dialogue after I finish with some points that we still have to cover.